Okay guys, let's get going. I want this to be a dominantly ground human eye level experience. Um, you, you do really valid and potentially really nice paintings of this space in a vertical format, but I wanna keep the, the energy down on the ground plane and have the elements of the building looming up, but dominantly horizontal, secondarily vertical. So that's the first choice in composition that I think helps express my overall intent. As always, I start with the horizon line. This, of course, is the line of sight that uh, a person standing where I might be would, would be located. Also, it helps set up the uh, overall general um, composition in the, in the classical way, more or less the rule of thirds, about a third of the way up from the bottom or down from the top is generally best. And then a secondary vertical energy here, which is gonna be the location of most of the darks. That's gonna be my general L-shaped composition of shapes. So I wanna come in here and make the top of the chart, as I say, recede to a vanishing point on the horizon a little closer in than I had in the original. And we'll just try this and see if it works. That's the whole purpose of these sketches. It's just to uh, sort of think out loud visually and to play around with the location of elements. I think it would be compositionally wrong for me to show all three of these arches at least completely show them. I think my uh, intent originally to make the third arch sort of run off the edge of the page was correct, but I think I want to show a little bit more of it to help anchor the left side of the painting so I don't have to go so medieval on all these darks and colliding colors up there, the kaleidoscope that I painted. It is an imposing and symmetrical architectural subject. And that can always pose a challenge because a certain amount of accuracy is needed so it just doesn't look amateurish. Or, but too much detail, too much accuracy, if you will, will make it look, uh, I think, too much like stiff and too much like a technical drawing. So we don't want that either. I am going to have the light come much the same direction as I did here. I don't have any photos that show that, so I'm just going to invent it. Well, I guess longer photo of the facade has the, the light coming somewhat the way I want it from upper right to lower left. And it does also imply here some of the effects I'm going to try to get. For this entire large setback doorway, here and here too, but especially in the center, very deeply inset, all in shade, but not all that dark. So there's a lot of luminosity. I don't think I need to rely on these deep, deep medieval darks nearly as much as I thought. I think I can get by with more luminous colors, especially in the shadows and shades. The thing I want to do differently is why I, I do want to include some dark up here to help uh, encompass the light that I want to save here. But I don't think I want just this inchoate uh, generic shape. I think I'm going to use the idea of some of these flags that are up here on the facade but are out of frame to cast shadows across this facade in a slightly more articulated manner than I did earlier. I think this one might be a bit disturbing. It's almost, not quite, but it's almost dead center on the composition and that's not great. So if I do include it at all, which I'm tending to think I don't want to, I would want it more over to this side or arguably one over here and another off screen there. Here what I'm doing is just thinking about the background. I definitely want this a number two value, a mid-tone, with the light here, the dark such as I'm having it here, and then eventually down here. So I have a three, one, two value scheme. I really don't need anything at all, or much of anything at all. Um, 
to be articulated in the background. It can just be tonal. I do think in the center, um, these are very historic, beautiful, big door doors. I'm going to try to be a little bit more mm, specific about one or two of them, not all of them. Again, I don't want to create a technical drawing, but I do want to imply that one of them is open. So hopefully for the viewer of this painting, if it comes out well, um, it'll provide a sort of visual respite or a way to imagine yourself walking into this incredible building. I think it needs a few figures, but a very few, and placed there only for compositional value, not for illustrative value. So these figures I'm going to include just to help flesh out the, uh, the design, the composition of values, and also to help establish scale. I'm sure I will add some generic tonalities here, shadows from these people, and the people will appear as backlit, I expect, really just to add uh, substance and anchor and solidity to the bottom of the painting. That's why these sketches are useful. They help you make these decisions before you start the painting and make a complete hash of it. Light, dark, dark here on the bottom, feathering out to probably mid-tone, mid-tone there. So we have a path of dark, if you want to call it that, which I do, leading the viewer's eye here which just sort of encompasses or hugs the values of the rest of the painting. A path of light from here, up here. I hope it'll wend its way right through the painting and then out again. So sort of in a diagonal line of energy this way. The mid-tones will make a smaller reverse C shape this way. And the dark tones, as I said a moment ago, will have a large sweeping shape in that figure. So all these intersecting energies of value 